this afternoon to actually give you a scorecard for the year 2019. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Merry Christmas and uh, best wishes for a great 2020 for all of us. We have called this press conference to enable us to present the major achievements of the Buhari administration for the outgoing year, 2019. We believe it is important to do this for the record, especially against the background of the continued efforts by the political opposition to obfuscate the steady progress being made by the administration in all sectors, even in the face of dwindling resources. The achievements we are about to highlight are by no means exhaustive, but the headline, the progress made by the administration in the year under review. I will start with the economy. The economy continues to witness a strong performance building on the steady recovery since we exited recession. Overall growth. In 2019, the Nigerian economy grew at an average rate of 2.2% over the first three quarters, compared to 1.7% over the same period in 2018. Oil and gas and non-oil sectors. Both the oil and non-oil sectors performed considerably better in 2019 than in 2018. The oil sector grew at an average of 4% over the three quarters, compared to 2.4% in 2018, while the non-oil sector grew by 2%, compared to 1.7% in 2018. Oil production. The average daily oil production level rose to its highest in the last three years, reaching 2 million barrels per day in 2019, compared to 1.8 million barrels per day in 2016 and 1.9 million barrels in both 2017 and 2018. Major growth sectors. In particular, the third quarter of 2019, the major growth drivers were information and communication, agriculture, mining and cooling, transportation and storage, as well as manufacturing, all of which have seen considerable focus by government in 2019. In the third quarter of 2019, a total of 34 economic activities witnessed positive expansion, same as in 2018. Inflation rate. The trends indicate that overall, macroeconomic stability is being achieved, with inflation rates steadily trending downwards. Headline inflation. Year on year, headline inflation rate declined steadily from 15.1% in January 2018 to 11.9% in November 2019. Core inflation. Year on year, core inflation rates slowed from 12.1% to 9% between January last year and November this year. Food inflation. Year on year, food inflation rate decreased from 18.9% in July 2018 to 14.5% in November 2019. Foreign trade performance. Strong performance in the external sector suggests increasing diversification of exports and export revenue. Imports. The value of imports in 2019 as at the third quarter stood at 11.6 trillion naira compared to 9.6 trillion naira as at the third quarter of 2018. 
This represents an annual growth rate of 21% between 2018 and 2019. Other than refined petroleum products, major imports have been machinery and vehicles. Exports. The value of exports grew by 2.5% between 2018 and 2019 as at the third quarter, rising from 14 trillion naira to 14.4 trillion naira. This resulted in a strong in a stronger overall performance and an increase in the value of total trade by 10% between 2018 and 2019. 20 key exports of note. While the value of crude oil exports decreased by 3.78%, non-crude exports rose by over 30% in value between 2018 and 2019. Non-oil exports also doubled from about 1 trillion naira to 2 trillion naira over this period. Fiscal performance. The 2019 buoyant performance shows that while revenues where revenue shortfalls occurred in the first half of the year, capital expenditure was prioritized, leading to a high expenditure performance. Government revenue. As at half year 2019, actual aggregate revenue stood at 2 trillion naira, or 58% of prorated target. This comprised of all revenue of 900 billion naira which is 49% performance. Company income tax of 349 billion naira, which is 86% performance. Body added tax of 81 billion naira, representing 71% performance. And customs collections of 184 billion naira, which is actually, was actually 147% performance. Government expenditure. As at half year 2019, out of a total appropriation of 8.9 trillion naira for 2019, about 3.4 trillion naira had been spent, representing 76% performance for that period. Capital spending has been prioritized in favor of critical ongoing infrastructural projects in the power, roads, rail and agricultural sectors. Nigeria's public debt stock. Recently there have been concerns in certain circles about the country's growing debt, both domestic and external. In the process there have been some misrepresentations and scaremongering. We therefore believe it is important to put things in the right perspective so our citizens will be well informed. One, the public debt stock is actually a cumulative figure of borrowings by successive governments over many years. It is therefore not appropriate to attribute the public debt stock to one administration. Two, Nigeria's total public debt stock in 2015 was $63.8 billion, comprising $10.3 billion of external debt and $53.49 billion domestic debt. By July 2019, the total debt stock was $83.883 billion, made up of $27 billion of external debt and $56 0.720 billion dollars domestic debt. It is therefore not correct to say that Nigeria's external debt alone is 81.274 billion. There is yet no cause for alarm. This is because Nigeria has a debt ceiling of 5 percent in total public debt stock to gross domestic <coughs> product ratio which it has approached within. The ratio for December 31, 2018 and June 30, 2019 were 9.09% and 
18.99% respectively. The debt service to revenue ratio has however been higher than desirable, hence the push by the government to diversify the economy and increase oil and non-oil revenue significantly. The government is also widening the tax base to capture more tax-paying citizens. In the face of massive infrastructural decay, no responsible government will sit by and do nothing. This administration's borrowing, therefore, is aimed at revamping our infrastructural <coughs> deficit, including roads, bridges, railways, waterways, and power to help unleash the potential of the nation's economy. The loans for the educational sector will contribute to the development of our human capital, while the loans for the agricultural sector will help the move to diversify the economy. Money sector, sorry, monetary sector. Capital importation comprises mainly foreign direct investment, portfolio investment, and other investment flowing into the country. As of the third quarter of 2019, total capital importation had reached nearly 20 billion US dollars, which was 34% higher than the 15 billion US dollars recorded for the first three quarters of 2018. While the inflow of foreign direct investment declined over the period by 39% from 1 billion US dollars to 700 million US dollars, portfolio investment and other investments, however, rose significantly by 39% and 42% respectively. Major sectors, apart from banking and shares, some of the major sectors that witnessed high volume of capital inflows in 2019 were telecommunications, production, and services. Major states, nearly all of the total capital importation as at quarter 3, 2019, flowed to Lagos and Abuja as is typical. New budget cycle. The executive, in collaboration with the National Assembly, succeeded in introducing a 12-month January to December budget cycle for the first time since 1999. This is a major development, considering the damage that the late passage of budgets has done to the economy over the years. With the new cycle, there will be a more rapid infrastructural development, more job creation, etc. The fight against corruption. The administration's fight against corruption is progressing on all fronts, including institutional reforms, loot recovery, and prosecution of alleged corrupt persons. As you are aware, this is one of the cardinal programs of the administration, with the others being the revamping of the economy, which have just the ones extensively and tackling insecurity which I will touch on in the course of the of this press conference. The administration took a major step forward in the fight against corruption when it launched the financial transparency policy and portal also known as open government. The transparency policy mandates the Accountant General of the Federation to publish a daily treasury statement which will provide information about what comes into the national treasury and what goes out on a daily basis. Under the policy, the AGF and all accounting officers must publish daily payment reports. With these reports, the treasury will publish payment of at least of payments above 10 million naira, while all FDAs must publish payments above 5 million naira made out of all public funds in their, in their care. The information to be published must include the ministry, department and agency responsible, 
the beneficiary, the purpose and amount of each payment. Accounting officers are responsible for providing answers to any questions from the public relating to transactions completed by entities under their charge. The Academy of the Federation was also mandated to publish monthly fiscal accounts detailing the physical performance of the Federation, including receipts from all the collection agencies and payment out of the Federation account. This must be done within 14 days after the end of the month. The AGF and all accounting officers of MDAs must publish quarterly financial statements for the government as a whole and for individual MDAs respectively. Professor Muhammad Ibuari said the reason for implementing the policy is to cement government's commitment to improving governance and supplementing the recently launched whistleblower policy and equipping the general population with the tools they need to report financial wrongdoing. This policy is unprecedented and will go a long way in enhancing transparency in governance and curtailing public sector corruption. The portal can be accessed through https opentreasury.gov.ng I repeat, https .opentreasury.gov.ng Similar in its efforts to block leakages and promote transparency in the management of resources, the President this year approved additional cost-saving measures, particularly in the area of official travels. Under the new policy, all MDAs are required to submit their yearly travel plans for statutory meetings and engagements to the Office of Secretary to the Government or the Federation and all the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation for express clearance within the first quarter of the fiscal year before implementation. They are further required to make their presentations using the existing template and also secure approvals on specific travels as contained in the plan from the appropriate quarters. On the nature and frequency of travels, all public funded travels, local and foreign, must be strictly for official purposes backed with documentary evidence. In this regard, all foreign travels must be for highly essential statutory engagements that are beneficial to the interests of the country. Except with the express approval of Mr. President, ministers, permanent secretaries, chairman of extra ministerial departments, chief executives and directors are restricted to not more than two foreign travels in the quarter. Also, when a minister is at the head of an official delegation, the size of such delegation shall not exceed four, including the relevant director, study officer, and one aide of the minister. Every other delegation below ministerial level shall be restricted to a maximum of three people. For class of air, tra air travels, the President has approved that ministers, permanent secretaries, special advisors, senior special assistants to the President, chairmen of extra ministerial departments, and chief executive officers of prostators who are entitled will continue to fly business class, while other categories of public officers are to travel on economy class. Also, travel days will no longer attract payment of extra code allowance, as duration of official trips shall be limited to only the number of days of the event as contained in the supporting documents to qualify for public funding. 
The fight against corruption also gained momentum with the, within the period with, the, with high profile convictions. Between January and October 2019 alone, that's a period of 10 months, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, secured 890 convictions. This is the highest anywhere in the world. Recall that in 2015, 2016, 2017, and 2018, the FCC was only able to secure 103, 189, 190, and 202 convictions respectively. The higher rate of convictions in 2019 is in addition to the billions of Naira in looted funds that have been recovered by the EFCC. For its part, the ICPC has launched a novel project of tracking the huge resources allocated to constituency projects over the years. The Commission has started with the education and health sectors, and already many contractors who abandoned their projects are returning to site. The Commission has also launched the Wahala Day app, which is a one-stop shop for daily information from the ICPC and for Nigerians to report acts of corruption. Let me reiterate what I said before. This is not the first time Nigeria is fighting the canker war of corruption, but it's the first time that the fight is being backed and sustained by a strong political will with a president renowned for his honor, dignity, and incorruptibility, personally leading the fight. And that is making all the difference. I've also said that while the war against corruption is still a war in progress, it's also fair to say that corruption has now been driven under the table and that the corrupt ones can no longer flood the process of their corruption the way they used to do in the past. That is a major step forward. After all, every successful battle is a step towards winning the war. Insecurity. Our gallant men and women in the uniform step up the fight against terrorism in 2019. Despite the fact that they are not just fighting the wrong of Boko Haram, but also the Islamic State West African province ISWAP. Yes, they occasionally attack some targets from the French islands of Chad, where they have been confined our troops, but they don't hold any territory that they did before the advent of this administration. When they hoisted their flags in the in the Bama, the Bama Caliphate, collected taxes as well as removed and installed areas. They no longer have such capacity capabilities. The successful attacks, sorry, the, the successful attacks they carry out in Abuja and other cities are now a scene of the past. Terrorists recent attempts to attack some targets in Damaturu, the UB state capital, and Bill in Bornu State were repelled by the military with the terrorists suffering heavy casualties. It is important that we as citizens do not say or do anything to demoralize the gallant troops who are fighting to keep us safe. It's Christmas and New Year now, and we are all with our families celebrating the holidays. But these gallant men and women are in the trenches to keep us safe. Let us remember them in our prayers and give them our support always, rather than sniping at them. Terrorism is not just a Nigerian problem. It's a global problem. It has global ramifications. The terrorists are as irrational as they are inhuman. They do not subscribe to any religion, despite their pretensions. That explains where, that explains why they reportedly murdered 11 innocent men in Nigeria recently in a dastardly 
and cold-blooded manner just to avenge the killing of ISIS leader Abu Bakri al baghdadi by U.S. forces. The world must unite to fight this scourge of our time. Also thanks to a multi-dimensional approach, the incessant farmers had such other clashes across the country as well as banditry and kidnapping have been reduced to the barest minimum. Border trail. Undoubtedly one of the boldest decisions ever taken by any administration in Nigeria in the decision to embark on a border trail as part measures to secure Nigeria's land border and also our maritime borders. Many have called it border closure, but it is not. Recall, gentlemen, that the Nigerian Customs Service and the Nigerian Immigration Service, collaboration with the armed forces of Nigeria, as well as the Nigerian Police Force, and other security and intelligence agencies, commenced a joint border security exercise, code-named Size Swift Response, in four geopolitical zones of the country namely south-south, south-west, north-central, and north-west in the, on the 20th of August 2019. The exercise has been coordinated by the Office of National Security Advisor and is aimed at better securing our borders, in order to strengthen our economy and address other trans-border security concerns. Over time, Nigeria has been confronted with numerous trans-border economic and security challenges. These challenges range from banditry, kidnapping, smuggling, illegal migrants, and proliferation of light weapons, among others. Meanwhile, the taste and preference for foreign goods, especially food items like rice, has continuously impoverished our farmers and adversely affected domestic government policies supporting the agricultural sector to enhance food security. It is however disturbing also that some neighboring countries circumvent the ECOWAS protocol on transit. For clarity, the ECOWAS protocol on transit demands that when a transit container bursts at a seaport, the receiving country is mandated to escort same without tampering with the sales to the border of the destination country. Unfortunately, experience has shown that our neighbors do not comply with this protocol. Rather, they break the sales of the containers at their ports and transload goods destined for Nigeria. I'm happy to say that the effect of the border drill has been phenomenal and positive. I will list just a few of them. Today, Nigeria is close to attaining self-sufficiency in rice production than at any time in the country's history, thanks to the border drill, that has drastically reduced rice smuggling into the country and catalyzed rice production by farmers across the country. We recently visited some of Nigeria's 34 integrated rice mills, as well as rice clusters in Kano. The rice mills are either operating at full capacity or have doubled their production capacity. Before the drill, there were 12.2 million rice farmers in Nigeria, but now 6 million people mostly youths, are eventually into rice production. Before the drill, farmers who are cultivating rice twice a year, that has increased to three times a year. And some rice farmers are now venturing beyond rice cultivation to milling, packaging, and marketing. Overall, the integrated mills currently produce 150,000 bags of rice daily, and about 35 million bags per annum. 
The border trail has stopped the smuggling of rice and other prohibited items into the country. It has led to significant seizures with estimated monetary value of over 3.3, 3.5 billion naira. It has reduced local fuel consumption by about 30 percent and reduced the importation of arms, munitions, and drugs. Because of the drill, the terrorists and other criminals are finding it hard to procure arms and ammunition while criminal elements no longer make their way into the country through the land borders. This has resulted in reduced cases of insecurity, whether it's kidnapping, banditry, armed robbery, or other violent crimes. Before the drill, the Nigerian Customs Service was recording about 4.5 billion Naira revenue daily. Since the drill started, the figure has increased to between 5 billion and 8 billion every day. There's also been a drastic reduction in illegal, in illegal migration. The exercise has also provided a unique platform for the various participating agencies to operate jointly, thereby strengthening interagency collaboration and reducing animosity. It is also necessary to place on record that this is the first exercise in recent times that military, paramilitary, as well as intelligence and security agencies have come together to conduct such an exercise, which is akin to a national security exercise. I will now talk on critical infrastructure. Gentlemen, if there is any area in which this administration has been consistent in terms of development, it is the area of building and revamping critical infrastructure. As we speak, infrastructural projects, roads, rail, power, dams are going on in all the city political zones of the country. No administration has ever embarked on such a massive infrastructural renewal, more so at a time of building revenue. This year, Nigeria and CNS signed an agreement to generate 11,000 megawatts by 2023. The power agreement is to support the activities of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCA, and the 11th Transmission Companies within the country, including software maintenance and support for four years. The laying of rail tracks on the Lagos Invital Standard Gate Rail line has almost been completed and test run has commenced. Contractors were mobilized to various construction sites across the country to deliver on the road projects. The heightened activities on the Lagos Badagri, Portakot Enugu, and Burakot Aba on the Enugu, Idori Kaba, local Oweto Bridge, Okene Aoji Road, Kano Katsina Expressway, Abuja Kaduna Kami Expressway. Rehabilitation and, and sorry, Abuja Khan Express will rehabilitation and Obajana Benin Road among others. Amended Deep Offshore Act. Mama Dubuari, in a landmark move, signed into law the Amended Deep Offshore Bill. This act means that Nigeria will now receive its fair, rightful, and equitable share of income from our own natural resources for the first time since 2003. All these years, the Nigeria has failed to secure its equitable share of the proceeds of oil production because all attempts to amend the law on the distribution of income have failed. But this administration has broken the takes. For the first time under, our amend, under the amended law, 200 million Nigerians will start to receive a fair return 
of the surfeit of resources of our lands. Increased income will allow for new hospitals, schools, infrastructure, and jobs. Conclusion. Gentlemen, 2019 has been a momentous year, and this administration has taken Nigeria close to its next level target. The economy has continued to witness a strong performance, building on a steady recovery since the last recession. Nigeria has not reached its debt ceiling 25% in total public stock to GDP, as it is currently on 18.99%. But its debt service to revenue ratio has been higher than desirable, which explains why the government is moving ahead with its economic diversification efforts, in addition to increasing oil and non oil revenues and widening the tax basis. Security of lives and property has remained a priority of this administration, hence, the tremendous improvement that has been witness in fighting terrorism, in banditry, kidnapping, and, and other acts of, of criminality. It was indeed a challenge. It was indeed a challenging year in terms of insecurity, but the federal government faced the challenge squarely to cancel doomsday predictions from the political opposition and their allies. The fight against insecurity was boosted by the border drill, which curtailed access to weapons by terrorists and other criminals. Thanks also to, to the drill, rice production has received a massive boost, creating millions of jobs and moving Nigeria closer to achieving self-sufficiency rice production. The fight against corruption has received a shot in the arm with the launch of the administration's financial transparency policy and portal. The increased prosecution and convictions and the tracking of the huge resources being allocated to constituency projects. The government has continued to revamp the nation's infrastructure while taking more steps to increasing its earnings from its natural resources through the amendment of necessary laws. We thank Nigerians for their support and perseverance, and we assure them that the administration will continue to take all measures necessary to secure the lives and property of all citizens while enhancing their welfare. We urge the opposition to join hands with us to move Nigeria to the next level instead of engaging in scotch earth opposition that benefits no one. You must have uh, read the fake news attributed to Senator Fadamsi that I'm behind the hate speech bill at the National Assembly and that this senator who is sponsoring the bill is just fronting for me. This is a bigger example of the fake news we are trying to fight. <laughs> I say can go I'm not the sponsor of the hate speech bill at the National Assembly. However, I'm committed to sanitizing the social media. I've said this before and have also invited all stakeholders to be involved in an attempt to bring sanity in the social media so that we can stamp out his speech. But I will say once again, I am not the sponsor of the hate speech deal and the 
typical example of what we'll be trying to, to, to find, which is that the greatest challenge to this administration and this country today is probably fake news. Well, I will round up to please thank all of you for always being there for me, for honoring our invitation, and as we pray that 2020 brings you and your family day joy, and we want to end this press conference. I thank you very much.